SmackDown vs Raw vs NXT WWE Survivor Series 2019 was a bit confusing in my opinion. Not sure whether I liked it or not. A bad main event, red lighting, my son Dominic. Okay, that was actually pretty neat. And Roman wins LOL. LOL. As much as I liked the pay-per-view, I feel like it was kinda underwhelming. The most important matches in my opinion are the traditional Survivor Series matches and in my honest opinion, both didn't really deliver. Maybe it's my problem for having such high expectations, and I guess I'm not the only one who feels that way, I've seen so many people having mixed reactions towards the pay-per-view and I get it. Who honestly thought that closing the pay-per-view with Shayna Baszler vs Becky vs Bayley is actually a good idea. It's a normal match, it didn't feel important enough, Bailey was a third wheel, crowd was dead, and I barely paid attention to the match because, you know, I was kinda disappointed with some results and then you give me this. Let's be honest people, I should be talking about TakeOver right now. Unfortunately I will not because it's way too late to make a review, but this whole match and Kevin Owens return was just absolutely phenomenal. But like I've said, I do think that the paper you had a lot of good as well. So let's talk about WWE Survivor Series 2019 and let's start with the kickoff show. So the kickoff show kicked off with a tag team battle royal. Yeah, that's important people. We got uh, superstars like DOC, the Street Profits, Hawkins and Ryder, The Revival, Rude and Ziggler, Lucha House Party, Heavy Machinery, The Forgotten Sons, Brizango, Imperium, and it wasn't that bad of a match. I was kind of surprised, honestly, because most of the time I hate these. Like, you know, that stuff happens at WrestleMania or at uh, Crown Jewel or whatever. But this time it was actually pretty good because I do like the ending. So basically, Dolph Ziggler accidentally eliminates uh, Robert Roode, his partner. But you see, he was not eliminated because he didn't go over the top rope. So at the end of the match, they still won the match because Root came back. So I feel like that was pretty smart and I enjoyed it. Then we got the NXT Cruiserweight Championship match. We got Leo Rush from NXT, uh, Tozawa from Raw and Kalisto from SmackDown. So this is what I don't understand. The championship is called NXT Cruiserweight Championship. Why are we having this type of match in a Survivor Series themed uh, pay-per-view? Didn't really make any sense but was a good match match nonetheless. Another match with a very good ending. So we got Selena Del Sol on Tozawa straight into a frog splash from Rush. And that's how he retained the championship. Then we got the tag team champions match. The Viking Raiders versus the New Day versus the Undisputed Era. And like I've said in my predictions video, it only makes sense for the, the Viking Raiders to win the match because they have zero momentum right now. If you've seen what happened at WWE Crown Jewel, they got eliminated very fast even though they were the last team, I think. So they really need that momentum, like I've said in my predictions video. So they won the match, thankfully, and that was a great way to close the kickoff show. So let's talk about the main show. The WWE Survivor Series 2019 pay-per-view kicks off with the Women's Traditional Survivor Series match. Team NXT versus Team Raw versus Team SmackDown. I don't really know how to review this kind of matches, so I'm just going to talk about the element nations. Well, that was weird. Io Shirai and Candice LeRae were taken away with undisclosed injuries early in the match. And uh, the reason why I'm not showing you why is because I cannot. You see people, WWE forgot to film it. So, yeah, we didn't see what happened. And what's even more interesting, we didn't even get an explanation. So, Thank you, I guess. Anyway, Bianca Belair eliminates Nikki Cross with a roll-up, and then she eliminates Sarah Logan with a 450 splash. Charlotte Flair eliminates Carmella with natural selection. Sasha Banks eliminates Kyrie Sane. Asuka eliminates Dana Brooke with a kick. Asuka left her teammates. Lacey Evans eliminates Flair with the women's right. Natalia pinned Lacey Evans with a roll-up. We got a pretty cool combination. 
Uh, I really like that. So that's how Tawny Storm got eliminated. Uh, she looked pretty strong. Blair got eliminated by Natalia and Sasha Banks. We got only three women left. Raw vs. SmackDown vs. NXT. Banks decides to betray Natalia. I don't know why, but we got a normal punch and uh, people, yeah, that was actually an elimination. That's how Natalia got eliminated. That's how much she doesn't care about the match, I guess. Like, that made zero sense. Now, of course, we got a bunch of problems during the match. This is what I didn't like the most. Shirai and Lorray returned during Ripley vs. Uh, Sasha Banks and helped uh, Ripley to win the match. So, you're trying to tell me that Ripley could not defeat Sasha Banks? That's something only a Mark would say. Yes, Sasha could not be defeated by Ripley, Sasha number one. So I'm not saying that the match was bad, I appreciate that NXT won. I'm just saying that some stuff didn't make any sense. It's smart to have these NXT women, uh, you know, uh, helping Ripley, but it's Ripley. If it was any other female, I would get it but she's way too strong for this. Then we got the mid-car triple threat match. AJ versus Nakamura versus Strong. This was... I don't know how to explain it. I expected the match of the night. And as good as the match was, I do think that it was kinda underwhelming and didn't really live up to the expectations, as good as the match was. Of course, we got a few cool spots during the match, and the ending was smart, I guess. NXT seeking the opportunity again. We got the phenomenal forearm, but Strong dumped Styles out of the ring and stole the pin on Nakamura, so another NXT W. Another interesting thing is that like 80 or 90% of the crowd were chanting for NXT, like even I was. Then we got the NXT Championship match, the match of the night, hands down. Adam Cole is unbelievable in the ring this whenever i see this guy in the ring i always see something new and during this match i was like you know what we should see nxt championship title matches during tlc extreme rules SummerSlam. you get the point if it's a third brand treat it like a third brand like i've said i've seen a lot of cool stuff during this match match of the night in my opinion and the ending was just as good so Pete Dunne was looking for his finisher but we got a Canadian destroyer and then the last shot a phenomenal ending to a great match Adam Cole retains wow I didn't expect anything but <laughs> I was honestly surprised then we got the Universal Championship match The Fiend Daniel Bryan versus did I just say The Fiend Daniel Bryan The Fiend Bray Wyatt versus Daniel Bryan I do appreciate Bray Wyatt's entrance and of course we still got the red lighting which is something I just I wish WWE would just let it go. I'm not, I'm not a big fan. You can't see most of the stuff and it's annoying for me. But the match was not very good, but it had cool moments. For example, the Yes Kicks and uh, Bray Wyatt not selling it. And the return of the Yes Movement, I like that. But of course, uh, Bray Wyatt wins the match with the Mandible Claw. Pretty predictable. I expected a little bit more, but it was a... Pretty cool match nonetheless. Let's be real, Bray Wyatt should not lose any time soon. Then we got the traditional Survivor Series elimination triple threat match. Team Raw vs Team Magnum vs Team NXT. And this was very very underwhelming. As much as I liked the match, the ending kinda sucked. So McIntyre eliminates Walter very quickly with a Claymore kick. Isn't that guy like undefeated in NXT UK, that was pretty sad. <laughs> Owens eliminated Shorty G with a bullfrog splash. Ciampa eliminated Kevin Owens with a DDT. And that was very, very fast. Like, I expected a lot more from Kevin Owens. Orton eliminated Priest uh, with an RKO, but then he got rolled up by Matt Riddle. Randy Orton RKO's him after the elimination, allowing Corbin to pin and eliminate Riddle. Braun Strowman was counted out. Corbin hits Ricochet with the end of days to eliminate him. Rollins eliminated Ali with a stomp. Reigns eliminated McIntyre after a spear, and then he speared his own partner King Corbin allowing Tommaso Ciampa to pin him. Reigns and Rollins eliminated Ciampa, and I was kinda sad about it. We got Lee, Roman, and Seth 
Rollins, which was already pretty underwhelming. Surprisingly, Rollins got eliminated by Keith Lee. And we got a pretty cool match between Roman Reigns and Keith Lee. And, you know, I was rooting for NXT, of course. But it was pretty predictable. Is Roman Reigns going to lose against some NXT guy? Of course not. Of course, he's not going to lose, unfortunately. Lee misses a moonsault. We got a spear and Team SmackDown wins the match. Roman wins LOL. Both showed respect to each other. It was kind of cool, you know, Keith Lee getting some recognition, you know, being put in this position. I appreciate that. But, he, but at the end of the day, Roman Reigns did not need that victory. Like, at all. So I feel like this match was... Kinda disappointing. It still wasn't better than the 2016 one. Then we got the WWE Championship match. Brock Lesnar versus Rey Mysterio. And what I liked about this match is that during one point of the match, uh, WWE made me believe that Rey Mysterio has a chance. Anyway, so Dominic interfered with a towel. Then these two started attacking uh, Brock Lesnar's bowels. And this was the highlight of the match, of course. We got a double 619 people and double top rope splashes. They tried to pin him and I was like, is this really going to happen? Nope. Lesnar catches Mysterio for an F5, wins the match, and he's still your WWE champion, of course. Uh, cannot really complain because that was expected. But for a no-holds-barred match, I expected a lot more extreme stuff. I'm not gonna lie. That was... That was pretty underwhelming, we got a one cool moment, but other than that, the match was pretty mediocre. And I totally forgot that we still have this women's triple threat match, and this was the main event, people, and people didn't care, I, I'm pretty sure I've heard CM Punk chants. That's how boring this match was. Most of the matches had something to deliver, and then you give us this, a pretty mediocre match, a pretty normal match, nothing crazy happened during it other than the fact that uh, Shayna Baszler won the match, and even that, you know, she pinned Bailey. Does that mean anything? I don't think so. So anyway, Bailey taps out, and that's how Shayna Baszler wins the match. Becky attacks Shayna, and the show ends. The final Survivor Series 2019 results are Raw getting one score, NXT getting four, and SmackDown getting two, so NXT wins. Does that mean anything? No. And that's the biggest issue. What's gonna happen next? Absolutely nothing. I feel like they should promise like title matches or something like that to Soul Survivors. I feel like people would have a reason to win and now it's like why would they honestly care? But anyway, like I've said, I expected a lot more from this pay-per-view but I was still entertained. So I would give Survivor Series 2019 6 and a half out of 10. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching the video and as always the great one peace, love and hugs.